Hi, welcome to A Grey Barn Rising. I'm sitting here this evening, as I always do, with Bootsy Beagle, and I'm reading the poems of the Russian poet Bella Akhmadulina. She lived from 1937 to 2010, and I've been thinking about her work, uh, oh, for the past several days, actually. Uh, here we are in Indiana, we're experiencing, like much of the country, very cold uh, period this winter uh, and with a lot of snow. And I've been thinking of those long Russian winters and uh, several of the Russian poets uh, who I admire. I have a few of, uh, of her books. This call is, one is called Fever and Other Poems. And also, this is entitled The Garden. They're both wonderful books, but I really prefer the translations uh, to read this evening in Three Russian Women Poets, translated by Mary Maddock. And uh, one of the things I think that you'll notice when I read these poems this evening is that there's great intimacy in uh, the work of Bella Akhmadulina. In fact, that intimacy got her into trouble with the Soviet authorities. Um, the Soviet authorities and the censorship board really wanted work of social import, and any uh, poetry, for example, that seemed, in their estimation, to be art for art's sake was considered suspect and not for the common good and for the, so the, the, the good of the social order. So her work was banned for a long time. She was eventually admitted to the uh, Writers' Union, uh, but uh, not as a poet. She was uh, uh, admitted into the Union only as a translator, which again was a, a commentary on the uh, aesthetic stance and the intimacy of her poems. She had been married for uh, a, a short time to the poet Yevdyshenko, uh, who some of the viewers may know uh, uh, as another uh, really popular and wonderful uh, Russian poet. And uh, her work is marvelous in its own right, and again, I, I believe for its intimacy. She was influenced by poets, uh, uh, several of the, the former poets who had come before her, uh, particularly those who expressed uh, that aesthetic of intimacy. So I'd like to begin by reading a few of her poems from this translation by Mary Maddock. And I'd like to begin with this poem entitled, At Night. This particular poem has a title. Some of her poems are untitled, and in this edition of the book, they're just listed as a title only by the line of the, the first line of the poem. But this poem actually has a title, At Night. How would you cry out to me? In the quiet, all is glass frail. Its head on the hook, a telephone receiver sleeps deeply. Crossing the dreaming city, I want to approach your window, very quiet and gentle, like a snowy alley. My hands over my ears, I shut out noise and streets tinkling with thawing snow. I put out the light so your eyes won't wake up. I order spring to clean up all the sounds of night. Is this what you're like when sleeping? Your hands have gone limp. The weariness in your eyes hides in the depths of your wrinkles. Tomorrow I'll kiss them so no traces remain. Until dawn, I preserve your dream. I leave like fresh, clean morning, forgetting the tracks in the snow among last year's dry leaves. This is an untitled poem. And again, in this edition, going simply by, I thought you are my enemy. I thought you are my enemy. You're my oppression and catastrophe. But it's like this. You're simply a liar, and all your games are cheap. On Manzahanaya Square, you threw money into the snow and used it to guess 
whether I loved you or not. And you looped your neckerchief around my legs there in the Alexandrovsky garden and warmed my hands, but all along deceived me. You thought I was lying too. Your lies circled over me like crows. Here, for the last time, you say goodbye in eyes neither blue nor black. You'll get over this. You'll have no regrets. But for me, there's nothing at all. How futile everything is. How absurd for you to drift off to the right, for me to drift off to the left. I really admire the way uh, she tunnels into a particular emotion and just uh, explores that emotion in depth, as she certainly does in that poem. It's another poem, another untitled poem, Again, in this edition, going by, the rain sounds like a dombra. A dombra is a stringed instrument with a rather large bass. The rain sounds like a dombra, strumming as it strikes the buildings. I tell a passerby on Insurrection Square, be good. I tell a child, play around. Bending toward his curly head, I say, quick. Let the string go. Free your green balloons. On the street where people are noisy, I come upon a white dog staring at me, understandingly. Inside the store, on the first floor, I see a pale cheapskate. He picks out expensive cologne, but frets over the label. I tell him, Forget your greed and gout. Buy your lover fancy gifts. But I have no luck. An ice cream cart rolls around between kids, good-looking girls, and adults who somehow look like me. This is how I end my day. I see shadows lengthen and the surprise of people who stare at me. Again, as in, uh, in that poem, as in others, she takes this powerful moment and delves very deeply into these uh, somewhat secret places inside her and, and explores how those places interact with the outer environment and with the world around her. This poem is entitled, Goodbye. And in the end, I'll say, goodbye. Don't commit yourself to love. I'm going crazy or else I climb to a higher level of madness. The way you loved, you sipped at ruin. That's not quite it. The way you loved, you ruined it but did it so clumsily. The cruelty of a miss. You won't be forgiven. My body is alive, wanders, and sees the white world, but is hollow. My head still manages a little work, but my hands fall limp at my sides, and like a sparse flock of birds, obliquely, all smells and sounds leave me. And I'd like to close uh, my reading of her work this evening with a longer poem entitled, To Sleep. To sleep is dancing under the Mesketa moon, 
crying with every muscle in my body, standing like a shadow, thin from stretching, not fitting into the cathedral of Zvete Zekavo. Sleep is an unspooled silver thread pulled through your needle, city of Tbilisi, where I live like a criminal until morning, where I live like a criminal until morning freezes my blood in your hothouse. It's going sleepless at night, seducing my friends with madness, having in my eyes the pupils of a horse, recoiling from dreams as from enclosures. Sleep is singing with the beggars on the bridge, Morning, forgive us. Gild our miserable, charred stomachs with your gift of gruel. Sleep is tossing from side to side, cruelly enjoying my insomnia. Lord, how I want to sleep in a deep bed like a cradle. Sleep is falling asleep. Waking is sleep. To fall asleep slowly is like sipping a drink. Oh, to sleep and suck at dream like a chunk of candy and drool at surplus of sweetness. To wake up late, not opening my eyes, enticing myself with the secret of the weather shadowing my bed, ignoring its greeting. How sacred the aftertaste of dream in my throat my hands are fresh and clumsy. The inexperience of a risen Christ binds my body with deep indolence. My brain is blind like a cooling star. The pulse of silence is sap in an unawakened tree. And then again to sleep, to sleep long to sleep forever, to sleep secluded in myself as if in my mother's belly. It's such a beautiful poem, To Sleep. I read from uh, three Russian women poets, but I read uh, the work of Bella Akhmadulina, and I hope that you seek her work out. As I mentioned, there are other entire collections of her work that I showed you earlier. And her work is easily available. And she's just a, a marvelous poet. Again, I, I think uh, in particular of great intimacy. We get that deep, intimate voice uh, that speaks to something inside of us all. Thank you so much for joining Bootsy and me for another episode of A Great Barn Rising.